Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are jumping back into the CNC routers and you know, specifically we're looking at the uh, Genmitsu Prover XL 6050 Plus. We took a look at this machine a little while ago and we've done a few projects with it. And uh, I've been running it off of a small HP, uh, small form factor computer. I've got a touchscreen monitor and that's been working well. However, they recently came out with a nice upgrade that may improve that and uh, remove some of the bulk. And uh, what they did is sent out this wireless control kit for the CNC router. So we're gonna take a look at what's in this box, get it connected up to the router, see how it works and see if it'll help declutter uh, a little bit of the extra stuff I have here to run this machine. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. I'm gonna jump right into it. All right, so moved you in closer. We'll just uh, crack it open here on the spoil board, uh, but not too much here. This is a fairly compact box. Um, so it should be uh, fairly simple to uh, get at it. So let's take a look at what's in here. Got an empty bag. <laughs> I think I just pulled that off maybe one of these cables. Uh, so we do have a ribbon cable. Uh, goes from a USB to, I believe, our offline controller port. We'll take a look, closer look at that. Uh, and then um, we have a secondary cable, which looks like it's just a straight ribbon cable. Uh, again, I believe this is, uh, depending on which model you have, uh, between the uh, Prover series and the uh, 4040 series and such. Um, we'll take a look. We do have a, an instruction manual. It's, a, it's quite small. <laughs> so you may wanna take a uh, close look at this. Otherwise, uh, they do have this online if you need to read it on a computer and such. But uh, they do have the instructions here. But yeah, this is, you know, this is maybe uh, two inches by three inches. So. So here is the module itself. We have, it's encased, nice little circuit board encased in some acrylic. Uh, we have the port for the ribbon cable up here. And then we have the micro SD slot. This is open, so it uh, looks like it'll allow some airflow and such, uh, but we will wanna you know, take in mind dust as well. So we wanna maybe keep that out of the dust. If you wanna download the app, they've got the QR codes in the manual. And uh, hopefully they also have uh, the QR code for the, for the manual itself. So I'm gonna take a look at this, see what we find and be right back. All right, so for the 6050 plus, our installation is very simple. We've got our wireless module here, and then we've got the USB to, they're calling it a JTAG cable. And so uh, this has a pin that uh, aligns the, the module to the uh, plug you just need to plug that in there and then uh, we simply just plug this onto the front panel here it's the usb connection to the offline controller and uh, we would just simply get that in the right orientation and plug that in and this lights up uh, at this point you know we'll need to figure out where we want to mount this we can leave it free or maybe uh, you know i may actually mount this on the side or something just to keep it together and out of the way, but for now, uh, we'll leave this here. And uh, now we can jump into the app and start getting it configured and connected. Uh, you do have to first connect to the Wi-Fi on the uh, wireless controller to get that connected to your normal Wi-Fi. Now you'll need to make sure you're using a 2.4 gigahertz network uh, and not a uh, dual band or tri-band network. So. I have this actually set up on my IoT network where most of my devices like that are on. So unfortunately I do need to switch this over to that network when using it, but we should be able to now connect to our device with everything powered on. Uh, it will see it and then we can connect to it here. And it'll give you this little warning, uh, make sure that the machine is turned on, the Z axis is raised, all this stuff. And uh, we can go ahead and confirm all and then you get your options to unlock an auto home or unlock only. I tend to not have my machines auto home. I can always do that myself if needed. So we're gonna go ahead and go and unlock. And then it should bring you up to this menu, which has uh, a number of features. And the first one here is we're on the jog control tab. So at this point, we should be able to just use these buttons to move it around. If you press and hold, it will move the machine as long as you're holding it. Otherwise you can tell it to adjust in your, your uh, distance and such. So we can go, if we wanna go one millimeter and then of course adjust our feed rate. So we'll go hundred millimeters a minute. And if I just tap that, 
it will move the machine one millimeter. If I flip it over to five, it's going to move the machine five millimeters. Uh, so some nice control there. And then of course we can jog the machine to the corner of our material. And uh, once we have it there, we can go ahead and hit the zero the X and zero the Y. But then we can also set up the probe to do Z or we can manually touch off Z. So uh, you will need to uh, go into your settings here. You need to set up your G92Z and your G0Z. So that's gonna be the thickness of your probe, uh, uh, touch off probe, as well as the safe height that you want it to retract to. So you're gonna have to set those first. Then you can turn on that probe function to set the Z. All right, uh, just to show you what we're doing, uh, we're over here in Vectric. I've created a simple uh, outline here. Let me get the toolpath off. So we're just doing a hello text on a block of material. I've set my origin to be in the lower left corner. We've set our width, height, and thickness of the material in here as well. And our zero position will be off the uh, material surface. So that's how our job is set up. And then uh, we will uh, go ahead and just do a pocket on this one. So I'll show you the settings here. We have a a pocket. We are using the eighth inch downtown Jenny, uh, which is my favorite bits. We're going to go in a uh, tenth of an inch down and uh, we're just going to carve this out really quick. So um, I've done the, uh, I've gone, gone ahead and saved this. I'm using the Sane Smart Prover XL uh, post processor or the machine is set up for the uh, Prover XL 6050 and we're using the GRBL millimeters uh, G code. Uh, went ahead and saved this and then uh, what I've done is I have uh, my iCloud, um, I've created a G-code for CNC folder on here, just copied that G-code up into the cloud, and then we'll be able to pull that down from the tablet or the phone. So let's jump back over to the CNC and get that loaded up. Now to load the file, uh, we do come over to this file load button. And from here, we can either uh, browse the card, the little micro SD card, or we can browse the phone. So here it has a card, there's a file that I put on there, but if we tap down here on load file, it'll bring up our uh, browse uh, function on the phone. And I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna jump into my iCloud drive. This is a way I found an easy way to wirelessly transfer files. Uh, I just set up a, a G code folder on my uh, iCloud drive, and now it will be able to pull that down. It's gonna load it in and now it shows that we have this file loaded and uh, it talks about the dimensions ready to use and such. You can do an outline uh, if you want to, that's like a framing function. Otherwise we can go ahead and hit run and let the machine uh, cut our file out. All right, with our file loaded and our machine homed and zeroed out on uh, X, Y, and Z, uh, we can come back to our file load feature and we can start the spindle, hit the run button, and it should run the job. So this is a pretty simple device and it's fairly inexpensive and it allows you to control your Genmitsu CNC from your phone or tablet as you saw it earlier and just kind of eliminates the complexity of having to have maybe a dedicated computer just for running your control software. Now there are a couple of quirks about it that maybe uh, could be improved. Um, I really wish that uh, it would work on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Um, I have it on my IoT network uh, it connects similar to many of the other IoT type devices, but when I tried to put it onto my dual band network or tri-band network, uh, it just wouldn't connect. And uh, I didn't want to go through the hassle of maybe trying to dumb it down to 2.4 to get this connected and see if it would still connect. So I do need to make sure that I switch my phone or tablet over to that network because they do need to be on the same uh, wireless network. Um, that's not uncommon with these machines, those devices. Uh, the 2.4 network is... It's actually, uh, it's easier to penetrate into dirtier, harsher environments such as a shop. Uh, and it's just, it's a cheaper way to implement it. Um, so it's, it's annoying, but, but not a deal breaker by any means. 
Uh, the other thing is just the file transfer. It's great that you can wirelessly transfer files from this. Uh, and so I'm using my iCloud storage just for a few files. I created a, a G code folder. I can drop them from my PC where I'm working with Vetric, drop them into that folder, and then uh, bring them up on the phone and load them in there. Uh, the other option would be to transfer onto a micro SD card, which if you're not using those very often, that might be a little bit of a hassle. You gotta make sure you have a card reader. So it would be nice if maybe they had included a regular USB slot on there as well for file storage, just to make that a little bit easier. Uh, however, the convenience of not using a computer and the fact that this is a very inexpensive add-on. Uh, at the time of recording, I believe it's about $35 and works with a wide array of the Genmitsu CNC's. Now they have slightly different versions for it and uh, uh, maybe some different things you need to do to connect it to those devices, but um, pretty slick little uh, device, very small, uh, easily attached to your machine, and then uh, download on uh, your mobile device, such as uh, iOS or Android. Uh, I think it's definitely well worth the small price to have it on an add-on, even if you still use uh, a PC some of the time. Um, I'm going to be playing around with it and seeing if it can maybe eliminate that, uh, that headache of having to have that computer connected to the CNC machine as well. So again, just a quick video on this new wireless controller and app for the Genmitsu CNC's. Uh, hopefully if you have one of these machines, you've been looking at this, that uh, I maybe helped you out with that and uh, answered some questions about it. Uh, if you wanna find out more, I will have a link down below where you can pick up one of these for your uh, HeinSmart Genmitsu CNC machine. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, that's my primary goal here in sharing information is to uh, get what I know and what I've tested and found out out for everyone else to help either learn about their machine or make decisions on something they're purchasing. Um, so hopefully uh, that did this for you. And if so, um, you know, leave me a comment. Um, and uh, I just appreciate hearing back from you. Anyway, thanks again for watching this. I hope you uh, found it interesting, helped you out a bit. Uh, but most of all, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.